guys, how's it going? Today we are planting five different types of evergreens out in the landscape, all of which stay relatively small, so easy to tuck in. Here they are. I think I might pull forward into a little more light. It seems a little bit dark right now. We're kind of early in the morning and it is 63 degrees right now. <gasps> It is so nice. It's gonna get to, I think, 83 today. And we are heating back up a little bit. We're gonna get into the mid 90s by the end of the 10 day, but our mornings are so nice. It takes a long time to heat up to that temperature. There we go, can see those a little bit better. So we've got a Norway spruce called Blaze. These are all from Isley Nursery. This is part of the load that they sent out earlier on this season. This one grows eight by six. So in evergreen terms, that's on the smaller end of things. It gives you nice structure, beautiful new red growth. So those new growth tips, those new candles in the spring are red. So really pretty interest. And then we've got an oriental spruce called Tidy Tim. This one grows four by four. I love the little itty bitty needles. Look at those. It looks so delicate. Uh, hardy to zone four, and this one I think is hardy to zone three, right? What's negative 50, 40? Is that zone? Hold on, let me think. There you see, yeah, so zone three. And then we've got a white spruce. So a Norway, an oriental, and a white spruce. This one's called Big Berta. This one gets the largest of our whole load here. So 12 feet tall by six feet wide. I still kind of consider that on the small end of things, maybe small to medium when it comes to evergreens because anything that stays as narrow as six feet, like most of the time we can go up. It's, you know, the space to spread out that can be the problem a lot of the time. So you have an evergreen that stays six feet wide but gets 12 feet. That gives you some major presence and some structure. Uh, so I really love that. Oh, hey boys, where's Cheddar? Douglas. Hey, Russell. Come here, buddy. Yeah, you're a good boy. Also a zone three. And then we have a pine. This is called Irish Bell. It's a Bosnian pine. Uh, these stay eight by six. So again, another narrow one, just a little bit shorter than Blaze. But these have the deep green needles that are so pretty. And it gets just the most beautiful shape. It looks so soft. Maybe we can pop a picture up on the screen. This one is a zone five and grows like three to six or so inches a year. And then the very last one is a blue moon, Sawara Cypress. I have zero experience with this. This is an experiment for me. This one grows four by four. It has just those really itty bitty needles again, but I love that kind of blue tint that the needles have. It is a zone three and it's not pokey you guys it's soft i know that some junipers have this look too and they can be so dang pokey this one is nice and soft no problems there so i'm really excited to add these in i've got a few locations in mind at least for the uh, ones that get a little bit more height but the other ones we're just going to tuck in here and there and i think that that is what just helps bring so much weight to any of your flower beds because they're still there when everything else dies back we have lots of areas out in the garden you know because we're just developing still the south garden and will be for quite a number of years but there are several areas where all the beautiful perennials need to be cut back or they die back for the winter and we're left with nothing there so while it looks glorious right now it doesn't look quite as glorious in the winter and i always admire so much those landscapes that have so much to offer in the off season so that's something that i really want to focus on working on you coming with me all right
All right, guys, we got them all in the ground and I am so pleased with every single one of them. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous right there? That's our big Berta, 12 by six. I think it's gonna be absolutely perfect in this space. This whole corner has really just evolved beautifully. I was focusing in last year on really paying attention to these kind of back areas where you know you don't see them as much as you see the front ones but i find myself wanting to come back here as much as the other areas and that was the whole goal so i've got some lilac crush hibiscus in here just a little mini tour of some of the beautiful things we've got three of them kind of clustered in i wanted to shroud the hydrant right there and kind of hide it a bit there are some serendipity alliums there um, we've got the Ruby Chip Junior Buddleia, which is a perfect second layer to these hibiscus here. We've got some of the, I think this is denim and lace, it might be Sage Advice. I can't remember exactly, but we've got a drift of those. Limelight Primes, Back in Black Sedum right here. There's some pink, which one's this one? Not Pink Perfusion. New Dawn? Pink Dawn. Is that one of them? Is that one of the salvias? <laughs> I think so. It's a lighter pink one. And then we've got some Ann Folker geraniums. There's some ground cover uh, chamomile I planted earlier this spring. We've got some purple Veronica. The Super Bells improved pink. I actually planted these straight in their cans. Look at that, cans and all, those are those eco pots. I wanted to see how they would do. Whenever I'm doing reading on Super Bells, like on the website, it says that it's not recommended to plant Super Bells in the ground because they require such good drainage. Um, but I thought, you know, with the addition of the Eco Pot 1 in the ground, it's going to keep maybe some of the water away from the root ball. Uh, and it would be a good test to see if the one Super Bells would do it in the ground and two if those Eco Pots worked. And so far, so good. I mean, here we are uh, cruising toward the end part of August. Well, what, where are we right now? Yeah mid to late August and they're doing great. And then we've got a bunch of hollyhocks that we started from seed and these are a pale yellow color. And then of course, as you go back further, you see more things, a blue spruce, black lace, elderberry. Uh, you can see the little pine we planted today right there. But I love that upright structure. I think that's gonna be perfect because in the winter time, all of this stuff's gone. I mean, we'll have blooms on the hydrangeas still on there if we decide to leave them through the winter, but they'll be brown. But in this specific corner, there's no evergreen until you get you know, a little bit further in. But I just love the structure of that. And I think drawing more evergreen this way is gonna be nice because in terms of like what's right here on the edge, the only thing that we will see during the winter, we'll leave the sedum up. Uh, we'll cut that back in the spring. We'll have a grass here. We'll have the spent blooms of the hydrangeas but all the rest of this stuff kind of just goes away. So it'll be nice to have another evergreen closer this way. You know, we have got more as you go further in. In fact, let's just pop through here. We've got a red cone Norway spruce right here that I love. So, so pretty. Produces the most beautiful cones and they have a kind of an erratic growth habit, which I love. I think that's great. And then this is one of the great big spruces we had installed last year. And then our pine. Let me come from this angle. So this one again gets eight by six. So it'll just be kind of more of a little accent evergreen in here while our blue spruce will get quite a bit bigger, 20 feet by 15 or so. We've got our Chitalpas, which are doing great. They've actually put on growth since we put them in the ground. I'm loving that. The Lantana, of course, this is an annual. Uh, Benjamin wanted to plant it here. So here it is, it's looking great. But honestly, the more evergreens we can pack in here, the better, the more winter interest we will have. One other one in this area, you guys, that I absolutely love, and I didn't think I would love it as much as I do, is this Montana Moss Juniper. That is such a beautiful texture and color. It grows two feet tall, so it's about max height, and it, it's supposed to only grow about five feet wide, but it's definitely wider than that. I think we're dealing with between six and seven here. Junipers are a native to our area. They do really well. Uh, we've got some Osteospermum. These are the Horizon Sunset, Sunset Horizon, huh? Mr. Mustard Spirea, and so on and so forth. I mean, we could just go on forever. Okay, redirecting. Coming back this way, we've got two more we put in today. We've got the Sawara Cypress. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, you guys, but I was initially gonna pop the Tidy Tim, which ended up right here in this spot. But then once I kind of was looking, we've got a Oregon green Austrian pine back here and just a lot of green foliage. So I wanted a little bit of a blue variation in here. It looks so puny at the moment. Cute, but puny, but it will get four by four. So it'll be just this nice accent evergreen in here in between. This is the honey apricot rose that we just planted. So having that blue near that kind of orangey color is so perfect. And then we've got the reminiscent pink roses right here. 
So just a lot of soft colors. I think it's gonna be perfect right there. And then we've got the Tidy Tim right here, which again will grow four by four. And I think it's perfect here because one, I have no evergreens in this area, but we have the blue accent with the totem pole panicum. So putting something that's green here is perfect. We've also got that new Wigella we just planted. Look at how pretty, beautiful blooms. I can't remember the name. Maybe we can put it on the screen. We've also got some quick fire hydrangeas, which are trying to bounce back after all our rain. We got a lot of rain this last weekend. So a lot of our stuff was just like grasses. Well, not the totem poles, but a lot of our ornamental grasses were just flat on the ground and hydrangeas, you know, anything that has that bigger bloom or a lot of foliar growth without a really strong base just kind of tips over when they get really heavy in the water and then they dry up and kind of raise back up. Uh, so anyway, I'm thankful for how those are doing. And right now, you guys, it is 75% humidity. Like it was 63 when I started this project. It's still not very hot out, but the humidity I am not used to. I'm used to like 10 to 15% humidity here. Uh, so 75% that's that's crazy oh, last one ended up over here I think I could just plant evergreens all day long all day every day I would just be so happy with that okay so the blaze ended up right here blaze Norway spruce oh the brightness of that evergreen just taking a look through everything that's in this space and then just seeing that kind of shine with that brighter color tone, I think it's gorgeous. So we have the Miss Ruby Buddleas to the left. We have a willow, blue willow toward the back, Serbian spruce, Sunyarita roses, there's a perennial geranium, I can't remember the exact variety, and then totem pole panicums there, another Norway, evening rose, hibiscus, and so on and so forth. This is perfect right here. This flower bed is interesting because it's got two fronts to it. You know, if you're standing on this side in the grass, you're looking at the front right here, but if you're on the lane side of it, that's the front. And you know, I haven't really worked a ton on the front side of the lane, which is kind of funny. You would think a person would focus more energy on planting up the more, more visible or most visible parts of the garden, but I just don't operate that way. Just gotta feel right about where you're planting something. And this is perfect because eight by six, again, that's the stats of this one. So it'll just have the perfect amount of space to do its thing and I'll be able to come in. I'm thinking actually of bringing in another grass of some kind in here and maybe doing a drift of grasses and then something else right here. I do think I'm gonna pop the daylilies out. I just don't enjoy these as much as I thought I would. I don't know, jury's still out on that. The flowers are pretty, but they just look like a mess. The stalks look like a mess. The leaves always get brown and tattery. I don't know, we'll see. They do stay fresh for a, a bit of the season, fresh looking. And then I do like their yellow fall color, but right about this time of year, they start looking a little bit mangy. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, who knows? But anyway, that is gonna do it for today's video. So five evergreens that stay on the smaller side that are wonderful for a full sunspot in your landscape. As far as water goes, we always stay pretty consistent the first season. So right now, I mean, we are starting to cool off a little bit, which is really nice. It's a little less stressful on the plants, but we'll still make sure to keep everything well watered for the rest of this season and into next season too, into the heat. We wanna make sure that they have a good chance to root in. And then we start to really backing off. Uh, we usually start with two gallon per hour emitters and then uh, we back off to one gallon per hour emitters and then usually end up with just one emitter on the evergreens, if any at all. Of course, every area is gonna be different and it depends on your soil type. In fact, today, I noticed when we were over on the other side, that area was, it's way more hard pan, but way drier than it is on this side. This side, it was almost like it made the suction noise <laughs> when I dug out the soil because this area just hangs on to so much more moisture and the soil composition is different over here than it is just in the other side of our garden. It's crazy. I think the most important part though with evergreens is make sure to plant them a little bit high uh, so that you make sure that water's running away from the crown of the plant and no water's pooling there and sitting there on the roots. And then also just making sure that you work on the soil around them so that water doesn't stay there. It's well a well draining spot, either that or just don't water it quite as often. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.